Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, as some of you will be aware by now, I'm building this monster of a kit, this huge um, 172nd scale XB70 Valkyrie. Got it all scribed now, um, top and bottom. Dealt with this seam here. I'm going to leave it a few more days before I do any more scribing work because, as I said, this is um, very thick plastic. It's been glued twice. Look back, you'll see why. Uh, it's got sprue glue in it, which has been applied twice, so that may sink. I don't know, but um, we'll wait and see. I'll leave it another couple of days. I've put some primer on it and rubbed it back, and it seems to be staying. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go. But what I wanted to do today was um, put together a video, not for the experienced modelers out there will just look at this and turn it off, but people who are new to the hobby, people who don't like using PE or people that just often come unstuck with it may get some value for this I don't know this is something I always do when I get a PE set so um, I thought I'd just pass on the knowledge really uh, I've been doing this for what, 49 years now I've probably been using PE for 25 of them so um, yeah I thought I'd pass on the knowledge so I've got this Bren Gun um, PE set if there's a review of it on here if you uh if you want to see it, it's um it's called the Italeri 172nd scale Vacari Brengun PE set, I think. But it's on my channel, look it up. Um it's a very small fret set. Usually Edar do one big sheet, but this is obviously these guys are restricted with what they can use, the size baths they've got and stuff. So uh but that makes no odds. It's still it's still fret, you know, frets of brass, um uncoated, which is nice. There's no pre-painted or any fa anything fancy in here. There's actually no cockpit detail in this set at all, purely because you can't really see the cockpit. But um, so anyway, the first thing we do, we get the instructions. This is what I do. This isn't. I'm not going to tell experts how to do it. This is what I do. So the first thing we do is get the instructions. Look at the legend, and it's saying on here that R is replace. Well, actually, I haven't seen them use that, but they do this. They say do not use kit part thirty six thirty seven. So the first thing I do is get the instructions, go through and find 36 and 37. Well, I know that this is the, the nose gear, so it's going to be in here. So there's 37. Cross that one out. And I know I'm not going to use it. And I know because I've already looked, that 36 is the nose gear door here. So I'll cross that one out. Then we move on to the rear undercarriage because I think that's the next place or the only place where you're actually going to replace parts and it's saying don't use 45 of 46. 45 of 46 are here and here. They're the main rear undercarriage doors. So basically they're going to be replaced with 42, 43, 44, 45 from the fret set as you can see which is um lovely. Another thing worth noting I've only just noticed this as I'm talking to you the kit part will have a radius on it. You can see they're telling you to bend it here. It's always good to keep hold of the kit parts. Don't cut them off the sprue and throw them away. Keep hold of the kit parts. Then you can use the, use the kit part to form the brass. If the brass won't form, then you can anneal it. And to do that, you heat it up. I generally do it over the cooker with a, a low flame. Heat it up so it starts to glow and then stick it straight in freezing cold water. Not freezing cold, just cold water. And that will quench it. Steel, you harden that way. Non-ferrous materials, brass, copper, you soften that way. There are so many people on YouTube will show you just running over it with a blow lamp until it goes blue. That doesn't anneal it. You need to quench it to get it properly, properly soft. Try it on a piece of scrap fret. You'll see what I mean. It works really, really well with seat belts and stuff. I digress. So, going through the instructions here. Let's just concentrate first of all on the landing gear. So it's telling me with the main gear here that I'm going to be using, let's just concentrate on that one, that I'm going to be adding lots of photo etch to it. And it's also telling me I need to remove this part here. So I'll put a line through that. It's just to remind me when I get there that I need to take that off. It's also there. So we'll glue that together first and then deal with it. And then that, I think, is really all the work that's needed on that part. This is fairly simple. Normally, like with an Eddard set, you'd be cutting stuff off and sanding down and, you know, removing instrument panel detail and stuff to fit their panels. And then down here, it's telling me that I need to remove these vents here and on the side of the fuselage. And what this video is about, it's not about actually doing it. 
it's about planning when and getting yourself ready um, I'm just looking on here yep that needs to be taken off as well and that one there so it's all about planning and getting yourself ready now these vents are a perfect example I could go along now cut this off of here and add these photo etch vents I could also do it on the fuselage I could cut this off here add this piece of photo etch I'll show you where it goes that's the wrong side so what it's saying is remove this vent here and then in here goes a, a piece of photo etch can you imagine trying to work on the seam if I put a piece of photo etch there can you imagine trying to work on this seam if I put a piece of photo etch there and also if I completely remove this all I'll have to stick to is an edge like that on the photo etch so what I will do is I will cut this back to about here and just remove that much of it and then perhaps scribe a line down the side to give me a bit of better location for the edge of the brass and then I've got this area here to glue the brass to this one here there's a plastic part that goes in maybe I'll glue the plastic part in first and then glue the etch over the top you know you've got to think about this before you go because I mean like here there's a line I'm gonna to have to rescribe do I really want to be scribing next to a piece of photo etch brass no we will we'll add that after deal with the filler work or whatever after we've scribed it after we've assembled it and after we've dealt with the seam and also you have to consider handling if I built this and then put this photo etch on when I come to add it onto the main wing section I'm going to be handling this and I'm probably going to bend the edge of that in or even rip it off you know think forward before you actually start doing things think about it another example is this area here these jet engines now if I go and assemble this if I go and assemble this nothing like being prepared is there if I go and assemble this like this and then I put the piece over the top I've now got a muscle around with this great big piece of plastic so that I can put these tiny bits of photo etch brass inside here and all these little bits that go in here they all go along there yeah, do I really want to be doing that after it's all glued together so look at what you can do before you do it as sub assemblies and then work it out and do it that way unfortunately the nose gear bay you're gonna to have to do as a as a huge great lump because you've got no choice the note the nose gate nose gear bay is part of this great section here but I mean you could do that before you glue this part to the lower wing you know the air intakes you can do them before you glue them in obviously these parts here that go in the back you're gonna do them before you glue it on but just plan ahead now there are times you can't avoid it like unfortunately these parts here they go around the side of these ribs here they go on either side of the rib here and then there's a piece which goes along and down there you can see what am I doing covering the instructions there's a piece there a piece there and a piece either side now unfortunately that's all gonna to have to be assembled before you could do that but what I think I might do is glue this to this glue this to the upper wing section then put the lower fuselage part on then remove let, let the glue go off and then remove it and then I can work at it from here rather than having to work in this way I can get to it from the top so planning ahead is everything with PE under carriage legs you can add all those details as separate parts and on this kit glue them on right at the end now some of you and I've got the B2 on the way uh, on the go the undercarriage on that you have to add as you're building so if you had this sort of post photo etch work on that kit then you'd be very very careful about adding it now because you're likely to break it all off when you start masking and painting and handling it and stuff so there we go guys it's just a simple really sort of common sense thing going forward on thinking about your photo etch and um, and how you go about it once I start using the photo etch I'll probably do a bit of a how-to if I do any soldering I'll show you how I do that but um that's it for now thanks for looking and uh, keep looking out for the next update number nine on the Valkyrie it's coming together quite quickly um, and I think now it's going to come together really fast because there's only a few parts left to glue on 
Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.